These slides introduce landmark morphometrics, a technique for quantifying and analyzing shape. Uh, you will use this technique to classify trilobite specimens uh, using phonetic classification and assess ontogenetic shape change in those species. There are two procedural issues to discuss so that you understand the data that you're going to be using. First, the method measures shape, but size and orientation must be removed before shape can be quantified. Second, the data that you end up with are multivariate. There are X and Y coordinate measurements of many landmarks from many specimens. So you'll need to use an ordination method to simplify, visualize, and ultimately interpret your results. In morphometrics, shape is a technical term used to describe the form of an object, such as a fossil specimen, uh, independent of the location, size, or orientation of that object. Uh, for example, the triangles in the upper row all have the same shape despite being located at different positions on the screen, having different size, or being rotated to varying orientations. All three triangles in the bottom row, however, um, likewise differ from each other in their location, size, and orientation, but all three are also different shapes because their height-to-width ratios differ. In the case of fossils, size will clearly differ because of growth during ontogeny. Um, in addition, specimens or the images of those specimens may be positioned differently or rotated slightly, no matter how careful you might be when you're collecting the data. Uh, the screenshot image here is from a program for working with morphometrics, and it shows a scatter of the raw landmark points, which you can see really can't be interpreted because size in particular overwhelms any shape signal. So we have to remove size, rotation, and position. Uh, the method used to do that, to remove size, position, rotation from the objects, is called Procrustes superimposition. Uh, it's named after a figure from Greek mythology, Procrustes, uh, who stretched people or cut off parts of their legs uh, to make them fit his bed. Kind of a gruesome story from Greek mythology. Now, the details of how it works aren't really important, but in short, it first um, centers all the specimens using the centroid point or the middle point of each specimen's landmarks. Uh, this will therefore remove location. Um, it also resizes and rotates the landmarks of each specimen to minimize the, the deviation or the distance um, of each landmark from the average position of that landmark. Now, in this screenshot here, uh, the coordinates of each specimen landmark um, do fall into nice little clusters, or, or somewhat nice clusters, after the Procrustes superimposition has been run. Uh, the red crosses, which you can see with the numbers, indicate the average position of each landmark. So those are the points that are used to minimize the distance uh, during this procedure. However, even after this analysis is done, there's still the matter of interpreting differences in the XY coordinates of the landmarks of the many specimens. Each, each dot refers to the landmark of one specimen, and you can see that it's very difficult to see any trends. You know, one landmark might differ, but the other ones might be similar. So this is very analogous to the problem you had with the species abundance data, where you have many species from many samples. In this case, we have many landmark coordinates from many specimens. So because the problem is analogous, you will use another ordination technique, this one called principal component analysis, to visualize and analyze the landmark data. Um, like your previous ordination of the species abundance data, the specimens in this are arranged by the similarity of their shapes. So specimens that have similar shapes plot close together on the, on the graph here. They're indicated by the black labels. Uh, and specimens that differ a lot in their shape plot far apart. Now, the difference is that, that in PCA differs in how it plots the, the variables. In this case, the, the variables or the coordinate positions are plotted as arrows instead of as points. Um, the length of the arrow indicates the importance or how variable that landmark is in terms of contributing to the overall variability in shape. Um, the orientation of the arrow shows how that landmark differs among all the different specimens. Taking the X8 arrow as, a, as an example, it points towards the upper right of, of the plot there. Um, it refers to the X coordinate of landmark 8, which is the lower left position on the example cephalon there. 
Um, the arrow is long, which indicates that that feature is quite variable among all the specimens and therefore is a very important component of how the shape differs. Um, its orientation, in addition, indicates that the x-coordinate value increases from the lower left of the ordination plot to the upper right of the ordination plot. So to give an example of the specimen, so specimen 85CB, which is one of the lower left specimens, has a, therefore has a small x-coordinate value for landmark 8 because it plots at very negative numbers of that arrow. And this means that the, the landmark, that, that lower corner of the specimen, is closer to the anterior or the front part of the cephalon. You can see the arrows indicating the XY coordinate system that are used in the lower left. Specimen 11-1DB, which is the one at the very top of the plot, um, in contrast, uh, has a very large X coordinate value for landmark 8. Because it, if you look at the orientation of the arrow, that one is specimen 11-1db is close to the, the, the end of the arrow. Um, so in this case, that landmark is located close to the posterior or the back end of the cephalon. It has a very large or a larger x-coordinate for landmark 8. So remember that these landmarks are all measured relative to the centroid and do not include size. So when you're interpreting this, remember that there is no um, signal of size in the position of landmarks. You can assess size by looking at the specimens themselves. So in class on Wednesday, you will look at the results from the landmarks, the data that you will collect from the, from the trilobite specimens for the project, uh, and interpret ontogeny and group the specimens into species using phonetic classification.